You don't have to protect him, Hannah. He already has more than enough. What? Protection. Why don't you talk to me then? You know you can trust me. I've kept a lot of other people's secrets over the years. I have nothing to hide. Except yourself. It kind of started as a couple different stories that existed on their own, just gestating for years. I was um, visiting my in-laws in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I had this lightning bolt of inspiration where you see where these different ideas can coexist and merge together into one story. I had been developing a, a separate idea about a massive solar storm um, that is so powerful it knocks out all the power in Los Angeles. And it was like, you know, a bunch of 20-somethings running around not knowing what to do. <laughs> it was very shapeless. <laughs> and then there was uh, this idea of a man in a cabin or just isolated house like in the middle of the woods who is visited by uh, a bride-like character in the middle of the night. And it's, you don't know whether it's a ghost story or whether it's just some very eerie kind of thing. The two ideas on their own, I could not crack. I just didn't know mm. what they were beyond just the initial like image. Being in Lancaster and surrounded by all the trappings of Amish country made me think, well, there's something interesting that kind of seems like it might connect everything together. Once you had the Amish angle in there, it really became actually something you could you could chew on. You could mm. really explore the, the the dramatic potential of that. It's perfectly natural to fear the unknown. What bigger unknown is there than the life beyond this one? When I read it, it was like, wow, this is just, these are the movies that I like. Oh, everything that was going on with, with Douglas, I could just sort of relate to. Like the isolation, the sort of, I don't know, midlife crisis, if you want to call it that. As you get older, you have so many situations that have happened where you regret what you did. Hmm. And as you get older, you also become more introspective, at least I have. The biggest challenge with a priest, and I, I don't know why, but I always fall into this. Every time I've played a priest in general, I have to get through the, the reverential, feeling like everything I do is precious and sincere, mm -hmm. like I'm talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> On this particular movie, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do everything that to not do that. It's me, it's Sean O'Brien in this situation. Mm. I needed to just fit into the story. Are you sure you won't see? Who? Your father? My fiance. My husband. Oh, is that new, huh? Newer? Weeks? Hours. Well, when I read the script, I immediately felt like Sean did, and I was like, I have to be a part of this. And I just felt like, oh, and this is gonna be an interesting challenge. One thing that was really helpful was I got to meet with a woman that used to be in the Amish community, and I talked to her over Zoom for like at least an hour, an hour and a half. I took so many notes. Um, she let me ask anything I wanted to ask. And one thing she had told me was that so many movies and TV shows that have portrayed the Amish have just gotten it not Right. Mm. One thing she said that they often are portrayed as just meek and demure and have no strengths about them. Mm. So it was like finding that in her. I can relate to her uh, feeling isolated. I can relate to her feeling like no one understands. But just being able to add little things like praying before a meal, that was really important to her, she said to them. And so I was like, you know, things that I could add um, as much of that into the beautiful story you'd already written was um, my goal. We rehearsed some, which was helpful. You don't always get that, especially in indie films. We didn't have a lot of time to get it right. Mm. So I felt the pressure, not that you were putting me on, mm -hmm. under pressure, but that helped relieve some of the pressure knowing right. what we were doing going in and not going, okay, let's find it now when we don't, when the crew was like, we don't got time. Mm -hmm. We had to fly. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. what was it, 11 days? We had uh, 11 days to shoot 70 pages. Yeah. I mean, Which is not a lot. Not a lot of time. The major thing that stood out to me was the last day when we were in the woods. <laughs> mm. It was cold. And it was cold. We were outside. Yeah. We were outside in yeah. Pennsylvania. It, we had no, and we had very little time. It was emotional stuff, um, and it was 
a very big part of the movie, right? So mm-hmm. it was very important to me that we, like, I was like, we got, I got to get this right. And I remember just kind of like breaking down a little bit and you sat next to me and you were like, you are where you should be. Remember that. And that was it. Like, mm-hmm. that was all I needed to know was like, you are where you need to be. Remember that. I just felt like I was in a completely non-judgmental yeah. world and it gave me the uh, cojones to feel like I could go there. It's really important that while we're making art, we never forget the humanity at the center of it. Mm-hmm. If we're going to treat each other like crap, why are we even making art to begin with? Coming to set every day, I knew it was important for me, no matter how I was feeling, to help set the tone for how we were going to take through the day. I believe we were all empowering each other on that set because we were empathetic to each other's needs. Part of that is a testament to the great crew that we hired, yeah. which included um, a, a few... Pro- David Gordon. Uh, David Gordon, our, our DP, uh, Sophie Schneider, our uh, production designer, uh, came in from L.A. and New York, but we also had a, a local crew of about 10 grips and PAs and just wonderful people, our makeup artists, uh, and... Mm-hmm. The work ethic with which they approached the film made everything a lot smoother. So it was not that we built a well-oiled machine necessarily, but we had the right parts in the right places. One of the things that I really appreciated too about both of you guys was that you allowed for as many takes as you needed until you got it right. Rolling camera is the cheapest part of making a movie. So once you're there, you might as well take your time. But on the flip side of that, you know, we had 10, 11 days to get 70 pages in the can. It helps that we were all together in one location. It probably didn't help that it was so remote. (laughs) You know, there's the film you have in your head, the idealistic vision of the film, and then there's the film you actually make. And never the two shall meet because you're running up against reality, you know? And you have to be okay with that and find the ways in which it makes the product and the film richer. And it's based for the happy accident. Exactly, because that's what gives it life. We had another happy accident where um, we needed a small crane, uh, and because of a miscommunication, we got a big old gas crane uh, (laughs) that we ended up using almost as a drone because we could raise it up as the camera was recording. So I thought, man, it would be really nice if we had some kind of hero shot for this. And then Rebecca said, well, I'll do it. Yeah, I just remember you guys saying, like, if we wanted to use it, we would need to go really early Mm -hmm. before it rolled away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's do it. If you embrace what's going on, oftentimes you're going to be left with a lot of happy accidents. Mm. You're going to be left with things that actually make it better because you hadn't considered it. We did have to do a a reshoot day here in Los Angeles on a stage, but that itself brought some more happy accidents because you were able to bring in an actor, Will Tranfo, who was wonderful. He was absolutely great in filling in some of the gaps that we had. More of the horror elements that were inherent in the work you were doing came out with some of the stuff that we did on reshoot day. That's interesting. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so, so the process is is it's never over until it's over, until you're in the editing bay and you say that I have put the final adjustment on this final scene, I'm not going to touch it anymore. The the thing about post-production and wearing multiple hats is you also have to know what you don't know. I think one of the smartest moves was uh, bringing in our post-production supervisor, Josh Mm Wolf, and he was able to hook us up with a really great sound designer, sound mixer named Luke Schwarzweller. As a result of that, we were able to mix the film on the James Cameron stage and Fox Studios. Like, so cool. Uh, so random. A so film cool. like ours does not get that opportunity yeah. ever. That was an incredible experience and really allowed us to dial in a sound mix that matched the grandness of the visuals. We could not afford a, a, a VFX person to come in and do the VFX. So instead, you, Cameron Bile, writer, director, <laughs> editor, producer, bus driver, uh, you also came in and you learned how to do visual effects and you did all the visual effects oh, wow. on the film. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know all, that. All the green yeah. on there is yes. all Cam, it's like stunning. sitting at his computer figuring out After Effects. <laughs> I saw it as kind of a case study in really being able to harness the tools that are available to us to realize your story, um, no matter what your personal circumstances are. We did get to enjoy more than just making the film. The film did make it to Austin Film Festival. We premiered uh, at the uh, H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival up in Portland. Uh, We did the Victoria Film Festival up in Canada played in Mobile, Alabama. And then we wrapped up in the Hollywood Real Independent Film Festival here in LA. What is it like watching a film like this on screen with a big crowd? 
it was exciting because I love the movie. The story is so unique and engaging and different, and it's not something I've seen a thousand times. So that experience going was just like so thrilling because I'm so proud to be a part of this project as well. And knowing that um, we worked so hard and then it came together so beautifully just makes me so happy. And it's a movie that deserves to be seen. We are going to be making lots more. It feels uh, like this is really just the beginning.